Today's walk is probably one of the most requested, or it used to be. I haven't seen it pop up for a while. Um, particularly Steve, who's a regular commenter on here. And we're going to take a walk to East Ham. Wonderful district of London, once a borough. The borough of East Ham, if it got absorbed into Newham in 1963-65. Act of Parliament was 1963, actually happened in 1965. So that's where we're going to start go across one step flats. And then we're going to walk down the high street and probably end up sort of down near Beckton. Some of you might remember last year, about this time actually, I did a live stream across here. Just up there was a really devastating fire that ripped across Wanstead Flats. And just uh, as we're walking across Wanstead Flats, it'd be good to take a look at the regrowth. Came across here the other night. I love Wanstead Flats, as you'll know from watching these videos. And it was amazing to see uh, how much growth has come back and, and that there are all these areas of wildflowers as well that have sprung up from the scorched earth. Nature always finds a way. You may have noticed a new cap today. Amazingly delivered to me by Teresa and Dan from Vancouver Island, Canada. Thank you so much, Teresa and Dan. They came and met me in Stratford in East London. They're over here on holiday and they, and they schlepped out to Stratford to come and give me this wonderful cap. How lovely. So it looks like the circus has come to Wanstead Flats. It was the fair last week and now the circus. It's a long tradition of this kind of thing on Wanstead Flats. I've mentioned it before, but I think here was the site of the Italian POW camp on Wanstead Flats. If you want to know more about that, the Leighton and Leightonstone Historical Society have a whole pamphlet about it. Interestingly, um, the other week I was down uh, in Wanstead at the end of Nutter Lane near the rugby club and I saw some gates to a lane opening. I thought, well, that's intriguing. I'd never noticed that before. So I went to speak to the gentleman who'd opened the gates and he said, oh yeah, this is, this is the entrance to um, Leighton Stone Allotments, which is interesting because it's at the far end of Wanstead. I said, ah, oh. well, they obviously relocated here. And he said, yeah, they were relocated to Wanstead in 1945, just after the war. And he said they were moved from, I think he said Leighton Stone Common, which I thought was really interesting. And I said, oh, would that have been Wanstead Flats? And he said, yeah, he thought that was the case, which is, um, I don't know if that is, I don't know if that's correct or not, I'm sure. Among people watching this video, somebody will know the answer to that question. It's intriguing, isn't it? So here you can see more of the aftermath of the fire, which is a really terrible event. Very heavy rain last night. And once the flats becomes very boggy after the rain. this wonderful patch of wildflowers that have grown out of the scorched earth of the fire. Here we see the regrowth, the beautiful regrowth coming out of the burnt earth. So I've ended up coming right up to the far end of Wanstead Flats, whereas I want to go right over to the other corner to then go down to East Ham. I did walk sort of through East Ham on a video, oh I think it's probably about four years ago now, I went through Plashit Park and I carried on to Little Ilford and then you know Big Ilford. <laughs> but here I'm going to go down the high street, more sort of the whole length I think. really quite a grim day when I left home this morning. I had my jacket on, but it's come out really beautiful, hasn't it? After the heavy rains yesterday, I'm 
and today we have the sunshine. The incredibly grand City of London Cemetery and Crematorium. I've never actually been inside and um, today is not the day. Manor Park. Technically speaking, this is the edge of Epping Forest here, the very corner of it. So it looks like they've done a, a bit of work widening the pavement down here, calming down the traffic. There's the Blakesley Arms over there. That pub, anyone know that place? Is that a place to go for a decent pint, do you reckon? Not, not now, it's the midday, but you know. Romford Road, the old Roman thoroughfare, heading out east from London. And the Earl of Essex, majestic old boozer, eh? Now it's closed. It was actually a, a wedding venue last time I came past here a couple of years ago, but even that seems to have closed now. And next to it is another really majestic building. Actually, this is the wedding venue, the Royal Regency. Once the coronation, I'm, I'm guessing it was a cinema. East Ham, like uh, a lot of East London, particularly obviously Newham, particularly, you know, really had a population explosion with the building of the Royal Docks. You'd have seen a couple of films I made down there last year. Vast area employing tens of thousands of people. And then you had all the associated industries that serviced the docks as well. So this area just exploded. But of course, you can imagine the devastation that was caused when the docks closed, you know. And we're bombed, this area is massively bombed during the Second World War. That's where you see a lot of the kind of housing around me. It was built on bomb sites a lot of the times. So it's really seen a lot of change, this area, over the last 200 years from being on the edge of the forest in the countryside, very uh, fertile grazing land, to uh, various phases of its development ever since. History of East and West Ham by Dr. Pargenstecker, published in 1908. East Ham is perhaps the most remarkable example of rapid transformation from a rural to an urban community. Its marvellous growth and development is absolutely without parallel in the history of the United Kingdom. Even 30 years ago, it was still a dull, straggling village with a scattered population. This is uh, an area actually associated with one of London's great antiquarians of the 18th century. I actually can't really uh, pronounce his name. Smart Lathulia or something. He was a Huguenot. And of course, actually, as we'll see later on, William Stukeley is buried down at East Ham Church. Uh, but down this road here, Church Road, you'll find the delightful Little Ilford Church, which is a very old church, worth a visit. There's a video here on my channel. It's a real shame to see this. The Ruskin Arms has closed. I mean, this would have been sort of done up recently. It all been sort of gentrified and made into a sort of real ale place, and now it's, uh, it's closed. It's a pub with a lot of history. I was told by Jimmy Winston, one of the founder members of Small Faces, that the Small Faces used to rehearse at the Ruskin Arms because Jimmy's dad was the landlord. I'm looking for a good place to eat at some point. Neglected to ask for any recommendations, so I hope I make the right choice. This is a really beautiful strip of buildings along here. Coming down now towards the sort of more commercial part of the high street, so. This really beautiful Hindu temple here. It's actually an even bigger one nearby in Little Ilford, and I went inside and it was amazing.
So, Annapurna looks quite decent, doesn't it? Veg and non-veg, five quid lunch buffet. Can't go wrong, right? The food was fantastic. Just the right choice. East Ham tube station. Barking Road's a fairly interesting stretch of tarmac. There's a notable Beatles gig played down here. And there's still some great shops along here, including the amazing New and Book Shop and also the Doctor Who shop. But here's the real jewel in the crown of East Ham. East Ham Town Hall. What an incredible building. Sat here as it is on the Barking Road. The Town Hall, which opened in 1903, is a handsome structure and an emblem in itself of the wonderful growth of the municipal idea within recent years. It has handsome gables, large windows and a green slate roof, dominated by a handsome well-proportioned clock tower rising to a height of 150 feet. The Red Lion, right next to Central Park. This actually hosts one of my favourite nights out in all of London, what's cooking? Country fried rocking music. It's a fantastic music night that is actually in Leytonstone uh, X Services Club. And then on Sunday, they do it over here. Massively recommended wherever you can find what's cooking. Look at that for a classic bit of council housing. What an amazing bit of social architecture that is. Central Park, East Ham. That's a really beautiful war memorial there, isn't it? I think is the old electricity substation. Looks pretty beat up and semi derelict now. But another majestic building. So we're coming to a key point up ahead where the high street meets the A13. And over here we have really what is uh, the highlight of this walk. I hope if we can get in is uh, St Mary the Magdalene Church and its graveyard. This is a site much celebrated and visited by psychogeographers. And the gates have always been locked whenever I've been here. This is actually one of the oldest churches in Greater London. Dates from the early 1100s, but it's one of the two churches which claims to be the oldest church to be holding uh, continuous regular services. And somewhere in that graveyard is buried William Stukeley, the great antiquarian, the surveyor of Avebury and Stonehenge, modern day Druid, I think this gate is open. This is down in Norman Road. Yeah, there we go. Access to East Ham Nature Reserve. I think Stukeley's monument may actually be inside the church. It's always uh, slightly strange when you see someone with the same name as you in a churchyard, with the same family name. Here we have Lily Rogers. When they were doing some work here at some point in the past, they found a number of uh, Roman burials. So the site has been in use for long, since long before they built the church. I don't think I've got much hope of finding Stukeley's grave. 
In the churchyard lies the learned antiquary, Dr. Stukeley. As appears by the register, he was buried there in 1765. He chose this place for his interment sometime before his death, when on a visit to Mr. Joseph Sims, the vicar. Agreeably to his own request, the turf was smoothly laid over his grave without any monument. The spot was identified in 1889, and the coffin, with an embossed plate of brass bearing his name, was found to be still in good preservation. This feels like an apt place to end the war here by St Mary's Church, East Ham, the ancient church of St Mary, supposedly on a ley line. And what a great walk it's been! It's been a real pleasure going on this stroll with you down across One Step Flats through Manor Park in East Ham. I'll see you on the next walk, wherever that may be.